Hello, hello, everybody. Good morning, where I am. Good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are. I'm Karen Hutton, and this is my, well, normally it's my Friday photo inspiration live, but it's Thursday. <laughs> we rescheduled uh, on account of scheduling issues. So here we are on Thursday. My time is in the morning bright and early and bushy-tailed. And I see everybody coming in, yay! So this week, um, actually all this month, this is December of 2021, all this month I'm having friends over. Like whether we do it on Friday, I won't be doing a Friday uh, this tomorrow, because I'm doing it today. So um, all this month I'm having friends. And so today, Deb Sandage is going to be here and um, we're gonna talk, Deb Sandage is just freaking amazing. If you don't know her, follow her at Deb Sandage here on Instagram, look her up online, and uh, we'll talk more about that. But she, um, she's a photographer, she's a Nikon ambassador, she is so inspiring, she's adorable, okay? And I'm talking about her and she's gonna come in here in just a second. Um, she is a friend of mine, she is, Absolutely fantastic. So she was definitely someone I wanted to have in here um, as part of my inspiring December holiday celebration. There she is. Hello, hello. How are you? Hello, hello. How are you? <laughs> great, great. Well, thank you so much for inviting me. I'm excited to be here and I know. actually I'm, chat with you again. I was, I know, because so I was just introducing you and I was, and so those of you who have been around know that we've been talking before, but I talked to Deb about, you know, it's the holiday season. It's been a tough year. Let's see if we can do some inspiring kind of like, you know, ways of thinking that um, can kick off the new year, can wrap this year up in, in fine form, um, be about creativity, be about soul, be about photography. And she was like, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I mean, anything that. creative and fun. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Creative and fun. I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for making the time to come. I'm really my excited. pleasure. Thank you. Me too. So, um, so for the folks still coming in, this is Deb Sandage, my friend Deb, who's <laughs> a phenomenal photographer and artist and human, and I just adore her. And um, thank you. So. So you and I were talking and one of the things that we thought was, you know, a good thing to go into being the beginning of December, we're kind of wrapping up one year, getting ready to start another. And I know I do this. I think you do too, is, you know, you have some kind of little process for wrapping it up and then launching the new, as opposed to just sort of like letting it happen. It, it's really about making some choices. Absolutely. You know, and I look at that critically like I do a photograph. I look at what works, what doesn't work, and what can be improved. Right. <laughs> and, I, I, and go from there. And, I, you know, I think a lot about the things that I enjoyed that I didn't get a chance to do more of. And so that is on my to-do list. And, and I looked at maybe some things that, that didn't work out for me just sort of really sounded great, but maybe it was a rabbit hole. <laughs> well, and, and, yeah. and to that, you know, people sometimes feel bad about that, but I mean, you, mm -hmm. you got to play to win. You got to oh, get dirty. Absolutely. You got to, you got to, you know, can always shower later. So, <laughs> that's what we're doing <laughs> now. We're showering. <laughs> <laughs> for the new year. Yeah. Awesome. So people are saying hi. There's a hi, Deb. Hello, there. hello. Hey, I'm from Leeche. Hey, how are you? <laughs> yay, yay. Thank so, you. So what do you, okay, so how do you go about, like, do you divide it down into, like, personal things, professional things, uh, creative things, or do you kind of lump it all together? How do you approach the culling? <laughs> <laughs> the culling. As it were. No, that's, that's a really good question. Um, I think one thing sort of leads to another, you know, as you go through, you know, experience, it's like there's little detours and other paths and things that you can explore. And, and I think that's what makes things so exciting. So I think I, I sort of keep like a shot list in my head, which is also like a life list of things that I kind of experience or see or want to do and, and put that down. This is something I want to try a bit more of. And, uh, so for one thing, um, a 
almost two years ago, I started to um, you know, think about fitness and, you know, health and everything. So I, I was running, which was fine, but I, I started rowing and, and I absolutely like it hurt so bad. <laughs> that I was, did you row? Did you row in the water? or No, this is indoor. This is sport is indoor rowing. Yes. Wow. I have a kayak too, but the, but the indoor rowing is a lot more. So it, it was one of the things where I was like, I was in such pain. I thought, oh, I have to do this again. I hurt so bad. You know, everything hurts. I mean, I know this is working and it felt so good, you know, and I, and I love doing it. And it's, I really made the commitment. So I'm really proud of myself. I rode over a thousand meters the first year. And I'm almost at a th another thousand or excuse me, million, two million meters. It will be very soon. So yeah, I'm, I'm excited about that. That's a, a, a heck of a long time to row. A lot of rowing. Holy a lot. Crap. But you know, in that process of rowing, it it has helped me um, focus more. I feel more directed, and I feel and I think about things when I'm rowing. It's like you know, put things down. Oh, I want to try this, and then I'm just like, oh, I'm rowing. You know, I have to put that aside. But all you know, good ideas happen. You know, like when you're out for a walk, people walk, and that's fantastic, or they run, or whatever they do. But I think that's such a a great way to focus and and just get ideas and. Yep. So, and stay healthy. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm just saying hello to everybody joining us now. Hey. I'm Karen Hutton. This is Deb Sandage. You hello, probably hello. Like that. And I'm seeing hellos from Chicago. I just saw Scotland pop into the house. Um, there are all kinds of crazy indoor bike riding yes. experts on the TV all the time. Yeah, there really are. It's that um, time of year. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we have uh, folks in here from all over the all over the world. So welcome, oh, welcome. Thank, thank you for, you. Up for getting up. Or, <laughs> Just being here, we love all of you and love your comments and questions. I saw Chicago uh, pipe up there. And um, so this is really fun. So so to your point about exercise and, and um, how you get ideas and how it kind of frees you up. So I always have like some weird little story because, you know, so much of my background was personal development and, you know, teaching because I taught voice for so long. You really have to know the the psycho, biologic, spiritual, soulful, you have to know all those connections, yes. right? So we used to do a lot of training and um, retreats and things like that. So one of the things that we did um, as Barcelona, no, Barcioa, I, I'm saying I'm, br I'm brutalizing the name of your city. I'm so sorry. Spain. But Spain is in the house. Spain is good. <laughs> I know. Spain. I'm like always, always taking notes where everybody's coming from because I always want to go visit all these places. Yes. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. But so one of the things we used to do was, you know, because the part of the um, the goal was like to, you know, to be able to access more of the, you know, the, the, the stuff, the good stuff, the subconscious, the, you know, clean it out and then get the good creativity going on and stuff. So one of the, and this comes from the Eastern traditions of personal development, spiritual work and stuff, something as simple, we did, actually, I think we did sand a block of wood. Like it was, the point was, it's so simple, but if you occupy a certain part of your mind, your conscious mind, the monkey mind, and physical with something that just doesn't take too much you know, rowing is repetitive. So is walking because the same thing happens to me because I hike a lot. And Barcelona. Okay, good. It is Barcelona. So oh, okay, good. <laughs> um, anyway, so sanding because it occupies this part of your mind, which gets it out of the way and allows something more to come up. So you always could go deeper with whatever it was you were considering um, simply by doing a simple repetitive physical exercise, you know, exercise sanding or <laughs> rowing or walking or whatever it is so it's a tremendous tool it's an actual thing psycho spiritual neurological everything uh with the brain that you can do to kind of you know clear out out with the old in with the new yeah and reach in and tap that source that's important yeah we need more creativity Inspir <laughs> inspiration mojo good vibes yes we do and that is why we are here today Yes. Yes. Um, absolutely. Absolutely. I love it. So, so this is so cool that you do all the rowing um, mm -hmm. and you're probably fit as a fiddle now too. 
Yeah, well, I feel good. You know, I, you know, it's it's funny because most of the people there are, are much younger than I am. It, you know, it's it's so it's so fascinating to be. Funny how they're getting younger. Have you noticed that? <laughs> yeah, seriously. Yeah, but it's so it's it's so empowering though, especially when I see women. You know, just really you know weights and and they're putting it out there and they're so strong and focused. You know, it's just mm-hmm. a reaching into that that level. Um, and, and finding the strength and, and it's it's nice to be in that just away from the world in that little bubble of right uh, but in the, during that time I do think about a lot a lot of different things and you know mm-hmm. so it, it is I think it just sort of clears the mind it opens your yeah. mind up it helps you focus overall yeah so. yeah yeah I think it's an actual I think that we could actually consider that a tip mm-hmm. I hadn't thought about the tip list for today you talked about the shot list today we're doing a tip list so that's a tip um, oh. Yes. Do it moving, breathing. So that was another thing. So it was another yeah. part of my, you know, uh, past was um, go out and walk and breathe specifically because the breath and the movement um, get stuff moving too. So breath, movement, it doesn't even matter. It doesn't have to be fancy. Just walking or whatever awesome. kind of movement is really good. So, um, okay, so then you look back, and so that was a good thing you're keeping for next year. Mm-hmm. Um, so, like, what are you dumping? What are you, what are you not doing? What, do you, what, what didn't work for you? What didn't work? Um, that, you've, that you want to share. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that I, no, there were things that I thought that would work themselves out a little better. Um, I think because of like where I live, you know, I thought, wow, underwater stuff is amazing. You know, I've got this really cool, and I'm going to do more of that. But um, also if you live where I live in my area, we have lots of gators, <laughs> snakes. In the, in the, oh. So it's kind of a freaky thing. I, I like the, uh, I inter- that. yeah, there are things. I mean, I see these things like, oh, wouldn't that be cool to have this beautiful dress and you're waiting in, in the water? You know, I, I know it's in that water. <laughs> <laughs> so, I never thought of that. But the beach is good. So so I think about different locations. I can still do that, what I want to do, and do it in a different location um, and, and explore that. But I, I, I think, so the things that didn't work out maybe locally, it's like, well, I'll just take it a few hours down the road and, and, and do this. I, you know, I love the idea of, you know, putting yourself in a photograph. You know, that's something I did a little bit of this year, which which was interesting because I did it as the double exposures. And so I kind of want to work on that and build on that. So, you know, so I, I don't think it, I don't necessarily look at failures. I think of, of a branching out points, you know, things that I can yeah. do differently. So I think crossing getting et by a gator is a, probably a positive thing. I see, I, I see those all the time. And for some reason, I think there's an algorithm that Instagram must know that they always show me these scary gator videos. So oh <laughs> I think, or maybe it's, a, yeah, I think that's the thing. But there's a lot of fun stuff. I'm really looking forward to um, next year and, and, and just continuing. And I brought toys. I didn't tell you this, but I have toys here. You do? Sure. I do. Do you yeah, want to do that I, now? Do you want to do that whenever, now later? Whenever you like. So well, it, it, okay, is it, is it photo related? Oh, absolutely. Okay, so the three things, you guys, that we're doing are, like, finishing up the year, kind of looking back. I'll, I'll share a few of my things, too. Looking back, looking forward, hopes, and, you know, kind of, like, intent, and maybe words that, you know, elicit the feeling that we want to have for next year, and that kind of thing. Um, and then, um, what was the second thing? <laughs> the oh, second we, we talk about self-care. Uh, self-care. Yes. And... And some of the things that you you were talking about, you enjoyed, you know, photo world. You you were amped up on macro lenses, which I am too. You know, oh my goodness, I just yeah. got the new, yeah a, a newer version of what I've had before, and it's just like you know a whole new window is yeah, exactly. <laughs> open. And then wrap it up with photo stuff. So oh sure. So yeah. let's do the toy. If the toys are photo related, let's do them at the end, and I'll watch okay. the time because the time. <laughs> Okay, okay. Oh my God, it's so exciting. No. I'm even more excited now. It's like um, show and tell. It's just I know, fun I stuff. Was, right as I was starting this, I was like, should I have brought something? And I like don't have anything to bring, except I could show my camera and my macro lens, but I have to run in the other room, which I'll do. I <laughs> Absolutely. Well, these are just generic things that anybody can do. So it's not, uh, okay. it's just fun stuff. So you can file it under fun stuff. To You're going to inspire me because I get, I get so like tunnel vision. I've got a project, you know, I've got to finish up uh, this month and it's, pretty big and um and I get some tunnel vision that I forget everything else yes including like cleaning my house and... <laughs> anyway right. doesn't somebody else come in the middle of the night and do that for you yeah that uh, uh, yes absolutely 
Yeah. <laughs> right. So anyway, okay. So for me looking, let's say for me looking back is, you know, I keep saying I want to write, like I even announced I'm going to write a book. Okay. Yes. So then I sit down. So I did, I made an outline. Then I found out that for the format I, I had intended, my idea isn't going to work. It would work if I want to really just drop everything and do nothing but write. And I don't. Um, what's your question? Have you come up with any new ideas to capture the festive lights? Yes. Okay. So that's part three. That, today. that would that would work with what we're going for. Yes. yes. Yep. We're, we're, we're going to go there, but we got to get all, we got to be all touchy feely first. Cause that's oh, yeah. who we are. So, um, so yeah, so, uh, so the book thing is this really been chapping my hide because I keep saying, I'm going to do it. And, you know, and then it doesn't happen. So I finally decided, all right, I don't really think I'm going to sit and write and mm -hmm. write and write and write. Because like for Amazon, it's got to be mostly written, not a lot of images. But what I see in my mind is this book of images and stories and feel good and like, you could just wear it, you know. Um, oh, I so, agree. Yeah. I know. So I want to, and, and for some reason, right, especially right now, I'm thinking more visually. It's hard. It's, it, right at the moment, I'm having a hard time putting things into words that are just like, oh, I gotta say <laughs> that. and I can only seem to say it visually with a few words. So I'm like, well, why fight it? So maybe that's tip number two. If you're trying to do something one way and another way keeps presenting itself at, and it feels better than the way you think you should be doing it, maybe you should do it the way that feels good. Uh, uh, great point. Great point. Yeah. And I, I struggle with that too. I do too. Because, you know, I, I wrote a book years ago on infrared. And I loved it hugely in, in time uh, encompassing uh, working on that, you know, the pictures and, and having, which was hilarious, you know, iterations of Photoshop, you know, doing screenshots, forget it. But you don't have to go oh back. My God, so, you know, it's so tedious. Ah! No, 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 no. So that might make my, my brain hurt. So, yeah. I, I mean, a lot of, uh, I think our peers have written books that um, are uh, more, I, I like the ones that are photo because I just want to see a picture and a caption and just I get wanna, the feel. And, yeah, and I, I want to lick it. I don't, I don't want to, uh, yeah, I don't want to stab it. <laughs> yeah, just, I know. Yeah. <laughs> I know. So, yeah. So I'm with you. I don't know. That means then that probably that it has to Patrice. be a PDF. I don't know. No. Uh, yeah. I think that's how a lot of them are doing it. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling with that structure too. Um, yeah. So there's a lot of stuff that's floating around and, and I would love to, to put out there in, in but, you know, part of it's just me, you know, it's just like, because you do, you sit down and you're right and you're in front of your computer. And, and I think that's, that's what I've been really hard for me because I really want to spend that time like running or jogging or rowing or, you know, going Living. out in the car. Yeah. Yeah. That one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that one. Taking pictures. Yeah. But it, at this end, at the same time, I want to be of service. So like the whole point of all this is to yes. be of service to the world of service to the you know, the greater spirit and, and, you know, out mm -hmm. there. Um, yes, absolutely. And so every time I sit down and I start, you know, crunching the, the concepts and then you got to back them up with research and that's all great because I do that, but I move so fast through it and then I internalize it and then it comes out of my photos that to stop and put it into words and interpret it and do it all that. I just, I feel like I'm stabbing myself in the brain. And yeah, I, I yeah, know, yeah, that's harsh. I know, it is. So, I don't know, maybe there's a new format. The other thing I often think is, I'm a voiceover professional. Why wouldn't I do something with that? And, but there's no Audio. The platforms for that are kind of janky. So, oh. <sighs> I'm you, to... you have the most fabulous voice on the planet. I know awesome. everyone has already told you that, <laughs> but you do. And it's so amazing. Maybe you could do, I don't know. You do a lot of stuff. You I do, do a lot of stuff. It, so like... I'm like, well, so what? If I do so many things, why not draw the threads of the ones I love the most? And I always intend to do that. I'm always like, I start the year intending to do that. And then by the end of the year, I'm like, wow, I didn't do that again. <laughs> I get all caught up in the shoulds and this and that. I did better this year, I will admit. But, uh, but yeah, so letting go of some of the shoulds for me and moving into really, truly what would happen. This is my always question. And I got closer this year. What would happen if I just did the things I loved and Ooh. did them the way I love to do them? 
Ooh. See, that's and I think what that goals. runs into, I, uh -huh, I think that runs into that thing in your head where you're like, oh, but that's not good enough because so-and-so did it like this and the rules are that and blah, blah, blah. And I get caught up in that too. But, but I think, yeah, but what if I really, really, really did that? Yeah, 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 exactly. There's that, that haunting uh, always happens, you know. A haunting. That's definitely yeah. the I'm like, ha, ha, do it that way. That's the Yeah. I'm on top of the world. Anyway, um, so there's that. So then, so then what is like, what's one thing? How do I frame it? One thing you want to do next year, but maybe that's new. Maybe it's a revamp. Maybe it's just something that's kind of like, I really want to try that. Like for next year, what? Okay, two. It's a two-part question. What is the thing, or idea, or whatever? And what would be? Um, yes, I have thought of putting all my ideas in an, an audio book. I saw that. Yeah, great. <laughs> as a print book, I have thought of that, and I still need help because I get yeah. It's, it's I'm complicated. I'm a <laughs> yes, yes, but it's a good idea. It's, it's on the table. Um, anyway, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, intent. So if you had like, sometimes people do, sometimes I do one word. I usually try and boil it down to one word because that's good training for me because I'm always like many. Um, an intent, a fe maybe that's a feeling that you want to have for next year, what you want next year to be about like oh, through thing. everything that you do that kind of permeates everything. I haven't really gotten mine yet. So I'm asking you this question first so you can answer and I can be thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. No, it, oh, to boil it down into one. Um, well, I think there's just a little concepts. I, um, I feel like, you know, personally, there's so much, you know, that one I want to do, but I have to focus, you know, do my goal was at one point you know, to get to 2 million meters, you know, that was huge for me, but then I would keep wondering what if I got to, you know, a little bit more than that or right. Okay. And keep raising the bar. That's so oh, yeah. Raising the bar. You know, the if somebody else, if your friend, your best friend said they did that, you say, that's so unfair. That's so mean. <laughs> no, we do it. You know, the, I see my friends, my peers doing this and, and it's just, so, it's just amazing. Or, you know, or I, I, a lot of people run and you know I don't run as much as I, I am used to, but I really love it. You know, there's something about just the simple fresh air, sunshine, just getting out. And then you, you know, just even walking, any of it's all good. But so those things remain. Um, I definitely want to delve more into double exposures. You know, it, I think that's something it simmers, you know, you do something and, and it, it's, it's a really unique experience of doing it. And you think about alternative ways to do it or other subjects and, so that's something I, I want to dig deeper into as conceptually into, you know, as far as the next year. So I probably will do that. And when you see my toy section, you can see that's why I'm so obsessed with <laughs> working with how my mind works. But there, but there's so many different things. I, I like that there's something in photography that is deeper um, and, you know, has more meaning and more, um, it's not so literal, you know, literal is gorgeous, but then when there's something that's just really more to that. So I want to build upon that story, you know, and that's really hard for me because I'm not like a person or people photographer. So it was really a challenge to work with, you know, myself as a subject, but it was interesting, you know, so I don't know, you know, maybe, I'll, you know, I'll branch out into different, but that's sort of been simmering on my mind, you know, as far as something that I want to tackle for mm -hmm. next year. So. Mm -hmm. I like it. For me, I want to do, um, well, I want to get out and shoot more. I can't wait till, anyway, never, I'm not going to talk about that. Yep. Yeah, Travel, yeah. travel do. and all that. Yeah. I'm like, ah, I just don't even think about that just yet. Let the world get a little or better organized. Um, so yes. therefore, what can I do here? So sure. you know, photograph more. And I didn't get to get out in winter as much last year as I wanted to. And I love that so much. Oh, but your also, pictures are beautiful. It, well, and I love them. And I... I'm developing um, a, a part of my business that I always intended to, which is, you know, the art, selling art and prints and big prints and some big projects have come through this year and I've loved it. I wasn't sure, you know, mm -hmm. if I like it. Will I not? I don't know. Um, so that's been really fun. I put a lot of energy into that this year and tested the water and I'm like, yeah, I think over time, you know, it's not something that happens overnight. So that's okay. So now I'm, I've learned a lot about that and, 
I'm going to keep moving with that. Um, I want to teach, but in some different ways. Mm -hmm. And then artistically speaking, I do this. Um, I call them my whimsical reveries because that's pretty much how they started, you know, <laughs> and, uh, you know, digital art and it, some of it uses my photos, some of it's from scratch. And I, I really want to make time to go further because I have new ideas I want to develop there. Uh, so, so that the photography and that kind of, you know, I like that. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. And that's something that I've been thinking about too. Um, two things that you talk about paths. Um, I think that you and I both, really years ago i mean you know when we talked in new york city or wherever we, we you know yeah. hung out for a little bit we, we i think we talked about paths and you know there's a path that leads you towards more education and and, and that kind of thing and um and then there's a there's an art path and that's a different path and i remember very being, different it's a very yeah. different, it's a whole different silo anyway, it's a whole different whole different yeah. and i remember um bef before i wrote the book that it was i was just you know just going everywhere. I mean, I love the idea of, you know, like printing. I had this huge, massive printer. I loved, loved, loved. I did so much printing back then. And, you know, I haven't so much now, but I'm sort of kind of come full circle. I'm getting ready to print some things really, really big, and I'm excited about it. And just seeing that um, I have a friend I'm, I'm hoping to ask to, to, um, to, to pay him to print some things, because like, he's like amazing printer. His name's Red. She's in the Sanford area. But I, I really want to see this, and I want to also explore that digital art path because I think you feel compelled to do things a certain way, you know. And then, but and then there's this whole thing on Instagram where they got really fussy about like digital art, you know. And 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 as I started thinking about it, it's like you know, I love this. It's so much fun, you know. I remember I created a lot of digital art pieces maybe years and years ago. And it was so much fun. And, and, you know, because it was free, it was um, creative, it's from the heart. It was just something you wanted to focus on. And, and, it, and it was unlimited. You know, you didn't, you didn't have any rules. It was just. Oh, I know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. You're, that's the, the other. We should be. I know. <laughs> kind of on the same wavelength there. Yeah. yeah, there is really, in these big pro print projects that I've done, art installations oh, yeah. and stuff, has been, um, and it wasn't even all, um, one of them was the Fujifilm art calendar. They do one art oh, beautiful, beautiful. feature and they make a calendar. It's not for sale, but uh, it is, what do they do? I guess they give it to their world, people in their world. Oh, sure. um, but it was an incredible project and it was an incredible product. And so I did get to see it in print, but then it was, it was just different. So all these little kind of weird types of projects in the art world. And then there was a big installation and, other things that happened and, and I didn't know how much I would love it. And I really do. <laughs> yeah. Some of your comments are, are really great. So a lot of people are asking like, are you, is the art online? You're breaking photographic rules. Absolutely. So, you know, mm -hmm. there are so many things. Something, I was at some place else and they were asking about, you know, what ruler and, and it's just like, I don't like rules. You know, I think it becomes so structured and, and, and it makes you follow, you know, like feel like you have to be inside the box and, and it, it, it was photo with, with photographs. Why did the double exposures are so interesting to me? Just doing something where it's not so literal, so you have more. So, I, so definitely the art path. I think that's going to be a fun thing to explore in yeah, the next couple of years. It's a nice path too, because even though it's a, even though the art like business part is a totally different silo. It's a totally different marketing stream. It's a totally different audience. If you're oh, absolutely. Business. Yeah. yeah, and so you're really starting from scratch if you're going to do it that way, just to be creative and, and create new works. I mean, there's no no limit there. But as soon as you want to make it a business, it's it's just really different. And I didn't fully appreciate how different it was. But now now that I've gone through the first almost year of it, which was incredibly painful and difficult and challenging because there was so much to learn. But um, now I think now I re readjusted and I'm like, okay, so maybe you know, I think of it more over time, which relaxes me and I don't feel so, cause I'm so driven, you know, all the time. And I it's good, good done. And now <laughs> yeah. it feels like, okay, this is like my baby. I can, you know, I can move forward and try different things. And it really feels like the fulfillment of a, of a dream it really does. Cause that Absolutely. was why I started photography in the first place. Yes, 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 yes. Um, absolutely. And, and, and I, re I remember, um, there were things that, about photographs that maybe it was just 
done it in an artistic way. And I think that's, you know, one of the things that re really drew me t towards the photography. And that's why infrared was so interesting to me yeah. because it was so surreal. It wasn't, it isn't like a black and white photograph. It's definitely different. I mean, that was so interesting. But the, the digital stuff was just fun. I, I, you know, oh, it's, it's like- There's a question, I'm sorry to interrupt oh, you, but there's a yeah, question, yeah. Do, you, do you still have your digital artworks online? Sure. Um, I, there's, they're, they're sort of mixed in my Instagram. I just posted one, uh, I think a few days ago, it was one that I took, it was based on a picture that I had taken in uh, Lake Gleb in uh, Slovenia. And it was, it was, uh, it was oh, I part saw that one. That was oh, really thank cool. You. It was fun. It was fun. It, it was just the, the process that, it, you know, that I went to to create. It's like, I, I want the water to look this way. I want there to be, you know, like birds. And it's just, you know, it's just, a, it, it is a, just a digital creation. So you enhance this, something, a space photograph. And it, it's, it's really interesting when you, and, and I think back when I did a lot more of them, I did, I worked with silhouettes a lot. So I would take silhouettes, which is interesting because I kind of do that with the double exposures, but yeah. I'd take the silhouettes and then I would add like a different background and, or, or do this um, image overlay stuff. Some of it's based on reality, obviously, with the pictures. Um, some of it, and it's just, you get to do whatever you want. It's just no rules. It's really yeah. fun. <laughs> I know. So. It's really, really cool. And then, yeah, I always love, did you Photoshop that? And I'm like, duh. Oh, no, see, that's, that's a, a negative connotation. It sounds like someone said, when someone says, did you Photoshop that? Absolutely. I mean, sure. Or no, oh, no, I didn't. Maybe I, I just used an app on the phone or something, you know, so, but it, it, there, there tend to be a lot of, um, I don't want to say anger, but people just think that's something to grab onto. Oh, you Photoshop that, you know, or, you know, <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah. <laughs> but that was, it's the art of it, not, the, yeah. you know, don't, yeah, that's, that's art the thing. Art is like supposed to be, so wait, two things. One, breaking photographic rules, please. Yes, I'm with Yay. you. Let's do um, it. Yeah, exactly. And the thing of it is, so here's the thing, historically, artists, you know, not maybe, I don't know about all of this is just historically Renaissance and everything. Artists were often the ones that people look toward for how to think new ideas, like uh, what can we do? What are we allowed to do? Like for that more blue sky kind of way. Um, and that's the purest form because, you know, if you look in the history of art, you know, they were bought and sold as well. Artists, you know, mouthpieces for their overlords or whatever but but the true form of art is um is a voice it's a particular voice and a and you have to well, you have to keep breaking your own ceilings because i mean i get into that thing where oh you can't do that because and i'm like seriously really are you going to say that because mm -hmm. <laughs> you know you know what i'm going to say to that mm, pick a finger <laughs> so um anyways that is uh that's the thing about art Mm -hmm. and life as art creating mm -hmm. your life as if it were your art is about you know continually breaking these ceilings and melting the walls and so on and oh. so forth um and some are, some photographers really use it as like self-discovery it is it goes really deep there's a couple of photographers yeah. are, are just are so phenomenal you, you see their work because it is so much about them and what they're feeling and 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 personally psychologically and it, it's 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 really amazing if somebody can dig deep and and produce works of art from what they're experiencing and um, what they're thinking about and it could be something simple, but it can be things that are very complex and it's, yeah. it's all fascinating. Totally, totally fascinating. So I'm just <clears throat> checking through comments. Um, really cool. So those of you who are joining, I see a lot of uh, new people joining. I'm Karen Hutton. This is Deb Sandage. We're talking photo inspo, inspiration. This is our part of my December. Let's get inspired. Let's, let's, you know, let's feel good. <laughs> my yes. mother used to say there's nothing more important than that you feel good because she said when you whatever it is you're you're feeling the most is what you're how you're going to create what you're going to create and it's sort of the feeling tone of the outcome that you're going to create so she always felt that finding ways to feel good and letting go of the you know whatever makes you not feel good is really key because yes. from that is the, the overtone of everything that you're going to create. So I, I got to thinking 
well, shoot, let's, let's, I'm going to bring in my friends who are really good at that. <laughs> We're going to have conversations about ways of accomplishing that. Not that it's an accomplishment, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah, it's a, that's def definitely the thought process. Um, yeah. It's, and it is interesting because I think that things in the past and things in the future, but that moment, things that make you happy now, you know, those are super, super important. I often think about like, if you can genuinely really feel good in the moment, it's almost like a nuclear explosion. Yeah. It affects everything. A positive one. Absolutely. It's quantum. It's qu I'm always <laughs> saying it's quantum because, you know, the whole quantum entered, you know, light particles and how they discovered that, it, you know, it's the thought, the feeling, the expectation of the people that are observing the, the uh, quantum light particle, accelerator experiment completely affect the outcome they didn't expect to learn that but that's one of the things they learned <clears throat> so it becomes like a, a simple way to think of hot way why is it quantum how does that work <laughs> and i think it's really important because what we deal with is creativity which is very quantum and also what's our medium in photography light and time right. yes absolutely those are my favorite things yeah Especially, so we yep. get to be shifters in that way okay word for, for 2022, you don't have to stick with it because sometimes you got to try it on, you know, roll it over the buds of your mind and see. But if you were to pick, a, if you were to start chewing on a word for next year that it, there's nothing more important than feeling good, right? So if it were a word that reflected a particular intent or a, a way of feeling that, that then would wash through everything that you created that at the end of the year you go, that was bitching. <laughs> well, no, well, no, I'm no. stuck on bitching right now. So. <laughs> <laughs> bitching, I'm that's my word. That's Can I use that one? I think that's yeah, yeah, absolutely. There's no limit. There's no limit on the how many uses a word or a concept can have. Yeah. So, bitching mm. is one option. What's okay. another? Oh my goodness! But I think the concept of the word just it, it just being um, just. Oh, hard, to, hard to boil it down to one word. Um, <laughs> it be? is. I mean, that's why you got to yeah. find with it. But if you can find the power word that every time you think about it, you get this like warm glow and wash. There's some questions, by the way. I'm going to yeah. come back to these questions in the, mm -hmm. in the chat because I love them. Um, but anyway, it's not about getting the word right. It's about yeah, the thought the word that triggers a feeling every time you think about it. Yeah. You know, it's funny. It, it, um, there's a, I think about this because every time I go to Rome, we have a word wall. It sounds funny, but there's words on there and they're all positive, you know, strength and all this other stuff. But the word power, and I think, you know, we, we control our, you know, our, our own destiny, you know, and, and I always think of the word power because, you know, have the power over yourself to do something creative or, you know, you can do this, you know, you can tackle this, you know, so I, I always try to think of that, that, yeah, I'm, you know, it's a big word, but a big person, I can do this, like you know? I yeah, like so it. so that's one of the words I, I, I every time I look, it's like, we look at the word wall, and that's what I see. It says all kinds of things like strength, row, you know, whatever. But I like that. I mean, you have the power. You have that power of creativity. You have yep. that learning something new. You, you can do this. You know, you just, have to, just put yourself in the mindset that everything you can tackle. You know, some people feel like there's concepts and techniques that might be overwhelming. But, you know, you just take it one little bit at a time. Right. And, and, and just keep running with it, you know. Yeah. And I love it when people... Every once in a while, you get these notes for people. So, you know, I tried this. It was long exposure technique. Wow. It, I don't understand, like, how you can do this. But I, you said this filter. Or, you know what I mean? And, and they do something and they tag you. And it's just so amazing. I had someone do this um, double exposure. He did a self-portrait. And uh, he, I think he was in Germany. He sent me this picture. On, on tag me in the picture and on Instagram it was so beautiful and I was just so moved you know so that's mm. that connectivity and that sense of community where you give and, and it gives back you know so yeah. that's a sense of accomplishment I think, I think us like minded one other reason I do these lives every week is I think us like minded uh, people need to connect with each other however we can in <laughs> fact know. in fact I'm doing you know I have a subscriber list it's not huge but I have never, I never had time uh, to do this, but I'm doing a Zoom hangout just for subscribers. And I kind of like made some questions. Oh, good for you. Yeah, yeah. I did a little, not a very short little questionnaire. So any, <laughs> anybody who wants to be a part of that can go to karenhuttonart.com. The link is in my bio. Sign up for the newsletter um, because it's coming up December 13th. 
and um, I'll be, I just sent the link out, but I'll be sending it out again. And you can be part of the Zoom where we just oh, fun. Yeah. meet and connect and talk about, you know, so I've got, you know, a whole list of questions now as a result of my little form um, and talk about stuff that matters and, and roll this over. And I don't know where that's going, if it's going anywhere, if I'm just going to do it once, but I thought, what a fun thing to do. Got to try it. Got to yeah. try it. Yeah. And <laughs> I want to meet the people who are part of my world that I don't get to talk to all the time. So absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So my word, you know, it's funny yours is, you know, kind of along the lines of power. Mine is kind of too, in the sense that it's sort of like empowered, but I, empowered. that's a better word. I have a tendency to be the kind of person that, you know, Oh, the door won't open here. Let me pick up a battering ram. You know? <laughs> I can go for it. <laughs> and it doesn't ever really end that well. I have to say. I've, it's a repeated pattern. So I have, in the last few years, I've gotten, I've flipped it because like, you know, I'm not going to get all into a whole spiritual thing here, but if God leads, if the creator goes first and I follow, everything works better. <laughs> so I, every day, my feet hit the ground and I ask father to be first. And I'm, I don't go to church. I'm not religious in that sense, but I'm spiritual. And I had visions when I was young and I was always very connected to the, to the source. And so, but somewhere along the line, my little willfulness really took off and it's good. I'm, I'm, I'm glad I'm a strong person, but now I'm trying to get the alignment right. And mm -hmm. I find that when um, that form of power leads, everything's better and I'm better and I have better ideas. And, and it isn't about me then it's really about what needs to come through because one of the most life-changing visions I had when I was a kid had to do with the high light coming through and out oh, and wow. into the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, it defined my whole life pretty much. And, um, and so I'm the last few years, I'm like, what do I, who you got to blow? Like, what do I got to do to have that actually be an actual reality in my, in my life? And so the, the power, just like you, that, that to be strong, but more than that, whose power, who am I leading? Who's leading me? I am empowered by, you know, light of the creator, just like my vision when I was eight years old. So that's what I want. And that's every year I do that. And so this year, I don't know, empowered, maybe, I don't know. I'm still no. playing with the word. Yeah, the word. it'll all come. <laughs> yeah, it'll all come. But that's kind of, I think, um, a useful thing because if you can boil it down to either a word or a concept or whatever something that's quick mm -hmm. to think about it it sets you back on your path you know you don't wander too far because you come back to that if it's too complicated it gets you get lost in the reeds but um <clears throat> if it's fairly simple then it's easy to bring yourself on target creatively professionally every which way personally Ex exactly yeah, it's like an alignment thing. Okay, questions. We're going to do our creative photography things next. But first, I want to answer a couple questions. Sure. Both of us can. So one question, Karen, why are so many photographers fixed on the rules when they critique or judge photos? Oh, my God, that's one of my pet peeves. That's right, one of my right. pet things. Do you, want to, do you want to grab that one first? Because, oh, my God, I could go for an hour. <laughs> Oh, well, that's a tough one. You know, I think that if you are, and, and, and I'd say camera colors are amazing. If you have a community and you belong to this, this is fabulous. But the, you know, let's just, for example, judges, you know, sometimes it's not how the picture made them feel. It's just that there's a spot of dust or maybe, the, you know, it needs to be aligned this way or whatever. So it, it's kind of hard. So some people get very hung up on the rules. And I think we do that even by ourselves. You know, it's like, oh, this isn't, the rule of thirds and, and I, I, I got, I was like, no, no, nope. <laughs> I got to toss those out. You know, I think those are, they stifle. I mean, I should think rules be, if they're called guidelines, it's more helpful. You know, rules are just the whole thought process of the structure. And uh, so I, I think there's a playfulness about photography that really should not be ignored. You know, a happiness, a playfulness, you know, from the heart. And, and I think that if you, if you're, putting out art to go over a sofa or if you're putting out art to uh, satisfy it, you know, that, that's hard. Sometimes you can do both, you know, but it's, it's good to just do the things that make you happy and not worry yeah. too much. I think um, people who do photo critiques 
like okay so photo let's see what you specifically said critique or judge photos so sure i'm just going to quickly say i'm going to give an analogy but really quickly um because I've, I've entered uh you know uh, photo not they're not contests they're like um exhibition uh sure or award oh. just because i wanted to know what those were about like mm -hmm. if you go to enter a thing for an award you know in a fine art in the fine art world what is that about so it scares the shit out of me part of <laughs> um which is another reason i did it because just to see yes you, know, you should do I can, how much i can scare myself but you know so when you're judging or critiquing photos you got to know why you're doing it and for what and what what the goal is right so that's going to define some of it but beyond that a lot of times um i think photographers you know, there's ego there's there's all kinds of stuff so that's like a whole other talk so here's the thing is we need to be this much my mother used to say because i grew up on horses and i trained horses for 45 yeah. years so she and my mother was the horsewoman who taught me you know all the basics when i was a kid she said you got to be this just this much smarter than the horse like implying that like oh, if I, yeah. my stupid mistake which i did she's like um you don't have to be that much smarter <laughs> <laughs> and so you know she's kind of in a, in a nice way would shame me into being better but um so, so when I taught writing, I in, so I'm just going to choose dressage as the, cause that was the one I taught the longest and did the longest. I did every, you know, did everything of course, cause I always do everything, but dressage was the one I focused on the longest and the form of writing at the time was influenced by the German style. And, um, the German style had this very strict, what you had to sit this way, point your toes a certain way and your back and all these things, you know, had to be a certain way. And I kept asking why, and I did it for a long time and it hurt my back and everything else. And I learned, um, over time from another teacher who came through the Swedish military, uh, the Swedish style was biomechanical in nature. And then he studied biomechanics way beyond that to learn. What the, what the body, human body had to do to work with the way the horse biomechanics worked so that you could have the most effortless thing instead of this harsh outline. So I changed my teaching at some point dramatically. And um, the thing, I got a lot of criticism for it, a lot of criticism for, for it. I was ruining my students and this and that and the other thing. And I kept walking around going, can you tell me why? You, know, you have to sit this way and your toes have to go this way and your knees have to, why? nobody could ever answer it and i learned why i learned that the, the whole positioning and the whole way that everybody was basing their entire teaching on was military that you had to look good in a in a, in a line in a long lineup of horsemen and you don't want to see a toe here and a knee there and everything's got to be in alignment because it's military and it's got to look a certain way well what does that have to do with functionality right so Mm, he's much smarter than the horse. So, uh, so yeah, so learning the whole biomechanical thing made all my horses free up. It made them more expressive. It made them move better. It made me oh. move better. It fixed my back problems. It, you know, the list went on and on and on, but you have to know why you're doing a thing um, to what end. And if you're just mindlessly applying a set of rules because that's what you're supposed to do. Like people say rule of thirds. Why? What is it about the rule of thirds? Do you know that the, the rule of thirds and phi boils down to a ratio, a number that is actually call it the God number, but it's because the, the ratio of almost everything in creation is based on this one number. So do people know that? No. So, you know, so you go applying these rules and you don't even know why, then, you know, you got to be this much smarter than photography. Okay. You know what I'm saying? <sighs> soapbox. <laughs> so anyway, so why are there so many photographers fixed on the rules? I don't know. Either they have no imagination or they're scared or they just don't know to think beyond the box. When I ran my retreats and we did photo critiques, I always asked what they were going for. What was the goal? What, what did you have in mind? What, what, what am I critiquing here? Like, what, where do you want to get to? Because That's a better let's, question. Let's, yeah, let's yeah. create that. And let's see where, you know, if you, okay, so if you want that, then you got to be more specific here. And if you want that, then your comp, then you're kind of, your comp was off because this says this, where this would say more like what you want. Anyway. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. God, yeah, so, so, so this, I'm sorry. I'm so soapboxy today. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> So, yeah, so definitely that's a little less structure for next year. And you're just, 
thinking outside the box and, and working. And, and, you know, and I think when, if you do competitions and you're definitely thinking about what, that's not like you're thinking about like what the judges will like, but you, you know, you have to be able to fit and conform to, because there are, you know, there are rules in, in competitions. So it's a little bit different. So you kind of know that going in. Yeah. I mean, it's like, and commercial photography has its own set of rules, you know, an art competition. Journalism. Sure. Yeah. You know, if you're producing art to go, you know, for home goods, then you've got to be flexible in your color palettes. You know, I mean, it's, it's, and I do voiceover, so I, I do scripts, you know? So what does this client want? What are they looking for? What do they, what do they need to hear? It's not that I'm going to bend and change who I am around it, but I, if I have any, you know, uh, if I'm any good at what I do, I can be who I am, bring that to whatever small little tweaks I have to do to go this way or go that way. It's like photo critique. What are you, what do you want to create? Oh, you want to create this. What do you want to create? Oh, you want to create that. So it's taking the same um, idea set of, you know, I don't know, rules or ways of, of getting there. There's 50,000 ways of getting anywhere, but if you don't know where you're going, then uh, yes. Right. That's, they, so that's where I think rules come in. I don't know where I'm going, but I'm going to sound like I'm smart, by having a set of rules that everybody else agrees <laughs> on. And I'm like, Oh my God. I'm bored of you already. Okay. <laughs> so um, the comment, when, when you're in the moment, it's like time has stopped. However, yes. it's, also, it's also flown by. So that's that quantum awe state where mm -hmm. time is irrelevant. It's the no space, no time. That's where the real creativity is happening. Um, and yeah. And yeah. Yes. I, you know, that's such a beautiful feeling. Um, and and to, to speak about that as far as like long exposure, you know, that's, I feel like that's one of the, I love what happens when you convey a sense of time passing. To me, that's sort of magical. So it, it's, it's not as literal as you taking a photograph. You may set up the camera and you'd be there for six or eight minutes, but as that time passes, I mean, you can't really see what's happening in every moment, but this cumulative effect of the end result photo is just like, wow. You know, then you see what happened over time. And I don't know, that's, that's a, a beautiful feeling. It's one of the reasons I love long exposure. I know, I know. It's so fantastic. Another question is, do you have anyone that has most empowered you? Speaking to both of us, I think. Um, I don't know, I think that liberty lives <laughs> in yourself i you, you know i th think that what that liberty of, of being empowered lives within yourself I, I i think that you have to let yourself be empowered you can't think that you can't do something you have to feel that you can and you know I, I, and i try to feel that way but yes you know i have a beautiful family that's that's been behind me and supportive all every step of the way so i'm very grateful yeah yeah, ditto. I'm just trying to think if I could point to anybody. I mean, I see rule breakers and they're great, but I mean, I don't follow any person. I follow the divine inspiration as much as I can. And then I admire people who are doing the same thing because that's kind of our job as artists to be visionary, to bring something new to the table mm -hmm. and unique but connected to source, which we are all connected to, but these unique expressions. That's how I see nature as um, a consciousness, you know, I believe oh, the earth sure. is alive and has a soul and has a consciousness and she expresses herself. And there's a, a multitude, a million different expressions. I love to find those. And, and so, you know, that's always an inspiration um, to me because it feels like a real divine connection aside from anything I can form, uh, uh, you know, of my own. So I do want to move into, I'm realizing uh, so many <laughs> comments. Wow. I have a, I have a click photographic mind moment. I don't know what that means exactly, but it sounds interesting. Anyway, so photography. We have a few minutes left and I yeah. we can go a little longer. I mean, I don't okay. want to keep people here all day, but I definitely want to get into the photography part. You brought toys. I brought toys and it was very last minute. And I was just thinking about going through um, some of the things that, you know, holiday lights or things at home or just, you know, so many different things. And I, I love like double exposures, you know, working with the 50 millimeter lens, you get that beautiful bokeh and, and all kinds of cool stuff. However, there are things that you can use that are a blast to use. So I like to work with prisms. So Ooh. here we go. <laughs> Where 
did you get that? What, this, is, what is that thing? This is from Get Fractals. Um, so you can buy them on Amazon. But this is a handheld prism. And I guarantee that if you go to a park and you're photographing something nearby or whatever, it's just or in your house, everything gets really magical with these crazy prisms. So I love them. The trick to doing this is I am still here. I have my iPad here so that when you said cool things, I could look them up. <laughs> so this is what you do. So you're, you're basically shooting through this with a 50 millimeter lens. This is, this is key. It is so magical and so beautiful. So you get really like a kaleidoscope effect to pretty much everything when you use a prism. So I like this one, get fractals. I mean, you know, that's just one that I've used and, that this one has really pretty results. You can use flowers, you could hold up to holiday lights, you can do nature or anything with it. It's really, really pretty. And there's some that, um, oh, this one, I haven't had a chance to use it yet, so I'm, I'm really excited. So this one you can actually mount on your lens. So if you don't have the right size, you can get a step up ring or, but this is like rainbow unicorns. Here we go. <laughs> Oh so, my God. Uh, isn't that fun? So yeah, you just hold it up. So it's going to really change this one with all the different, you know, the shimmery. So yep, this one is definitely a unicorn of, of a prism. So I love this one. This one is from Prism Effects. That's a cool thing, but you can rotate this. So if you were shooting a video, you could actually have this on your lens and you can rotate this and very cool things happen. So that's that that's, is so cool prism effects custom stained and beveled glass um actually it is prism lens effects that's that's why and, and everybody has seen this one this one's fun this is a regular a regular circular yes. yeah we've all seen these i have one I, that's almost the size of a bowling ball <laughs> it's just you so know much. i've used friends but yeah. i never got my own what do you call yeah. those things uh this is just like a like, crystal ball thing um i think i think call them lens balls that's that's the name of that one but they also come like this so i'm gonna, I'm gonna zip my mouth <laughs> <laughs> so you have another one this is like so you can hold this in front of the lens and get all kinds oh of, my god i've never seen one like that one so so this is what um photography sphere i'm seeing it's called <laughs> okay sphere, sphere. And then there's other one, so you can shoot through this. You know, this is a, like a cube one, so you could hold it in front of the lens. You can see how things oh my god change. <laughs> so these you. are so it's just um all different ones. Um, this one is sort of split, so it's kind of cool. It gives you like a honeycomb look. Um, really, really pretty. So if you're photographing a subject, but these are fun things to explore. I think especially this time of year is kind of festive, kind of fun, and and not so literal so you can just jump in and, and, and play with some of these toys this is a linear um this like this would make like four um so use like four dabs there oh, <laughs> neat. Where, now, on... do you have so do you have resources to places where people can get these things or like oh, what to yeah, call them sure. and all that yeah, I should make a list. Um, <laughs> it's pretty bad. I have to make a list of all my toys. But the, yes, these are fun. But the, honestly, the ones I use the most, are, I love this one. And this one is just the one I got from uh, Get Fractals. And they have a set. There's actually three in the set. Nice. So this is another one, you know, that you can use in that one I showed you before. But it's beautiful. If you walk around with your camera, a 50 millimeter lens, and you're and you're shooting you, you have so many ways just the way that you hold the prism so mm -hmm. you can slightly tilt it and it changes and i actually i did put some on my um on my social media sites today so you can get an example of how things look through a prism uh -huh. so it's kind of fun so you're thinking about words to describe how you go into the next year you know and that's sort of you know a, a path towards it you know going into a different direction so now i'm seeing like eight karens here <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> but that's a lot. But that's these are fun. These are fun. So you can do a walk around in your house or your neighborhood or if you're, you know, if you're going anywhere and carrying this. Because I like 50 millimeter lenses and you can do you shoot 105 with this also. So you might have to hold it a little bit further further from the lens, but you get the beautiful effect and um, it, it's just really pretty. And I think this time of year can be a bit more fantasy, you know, and that doesn't have to be so real. You know, this is um, fun stuff. So 
It's stuff that I like to okay, explore. Okay, so you, you said so, okay, two things. One, will you send me a list of those? Like of I wrote, I, I made notes and I looked them up on my iPad here so I can go look at them. But I'm just thinking about putting together a resource for our for our peeps. Absolutely, our sure will. Peeps. Yep. And everybody's oh. hearting that one. They like that. Oh, good, um, good. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's fun and, stuff. Um, and then Cameron's posting an Amazon. Well, it's a UK M Amazon to one of the products, at least. That's really helpful. Um, thank you for doing that. Thanks. Yes. And then, um, okay, so we do that. And then you said something. Uh, you said something yesterday when we were talking about, and I hadn't even thought about it, about us posting kind of like and then i thought well what is that is that like simul posting or is that like tag teaming or like oh. maybe we do our creative thing and tag each other and like you know oh, yeah, cross yeah, yeah. it's sort of like it's like um you know when joni met tchotchke <laughs> you know with, like, <laughs> what do they call it making guest appearances on each other's shows and stuff but um it might be a really fun way to play with these ideas and, and inspire mm -hmm. ourselves and others and maybe we can all oh absolutely uh, absolutely i i like it when people tag me especially if it's an idea you know, the, the, a concept technique that they want to share that they've, they've seen. And it always makes me feel good when, to see that, that the people are actually doing this. Like, this is why you took with a prism, or this is how I did a long exposure, look, double exposure. So yeah, I think it's fun. I like that connectivity. So we have oh, a lot of neat. Okay, so he posted a regular amazon.com link for photo photography, decorative crystal photography, decorative cleaning, clear crystal. So yeah, cool thing. So so in the chat, uh, Cameron's posting. Um, oh, thank you, both thank UK you. And and dot com uh, versions of different tools and, and toys, so we can all get playing. Yep, yep, we can definitely. Uh, and the, and the fun thing about these things, that, you know, is that people want to know. We like, what are you doing? <laughs> and you can see, you know, everything is reflected upside down inside this, and it's just, it's so beautiful. The, the larger one, like I said, that I use, it's just so massive. Um, but when people walk by, you know, it changes and it's just, I don't know, it just pulls you away from that literal world into uh, an imaginary sort of uh, alternate reality. And yeah. it's just so inviting. <laughs> I, exactly. Um, I uh, uh, was going to say, so looking through, you know, you've been holding them up so I can sort of see through them. I'm like, that's kind of the feeling I get when I do my whimsical reverie stuff, because it's mm -hmm. like that. It's like that. Like I always say, it's sort of like looking at the world like this or like this. Yeah. I have a thousand different ways. I grew a thousand different ways. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, um, and it's a way, you know, not everybody knows how to just sort of do that. So you can actually have a, a tool that will help you look at things differently. Cause that's really the beginning of any kind of change or inspiration or creativity is it's not about your gear. It's really about what's in here. How are you seeing them? How can, how yeah. can you, Yes, I think there's a quote. It's not what you see, it's what you make others see. Um, yeah. And, and I love that quote, you know, that it's, it's, it's true. You have the influence and the power to to show people your own personal perspective, how you are seeing things. And that's, that's a beautiful thing. And I think, you know, in terms of creativity, when we talk creativity, I, I just always come back to the divinity of it because every time i'm in that mode like cameron was mentioning earlier about being in the zone where time there is no time it seems to stop and fly at the same time it's that you yes. know that paradox um the divine paradox and i think of those as, as little moments of divinity where pure creativity is happening sure. and so i think that that's where soul. i used to always say you know i'm i'm, I'm in it to save souls <laughs> you know, <laughs> in this whole game to save souls. I don't really care. Learn photography or not. I'm in it to save souls. So I don't know if that's actually true, but I used to say that to myself because it, it came closest to how I felt about the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And, um, and yes, I, I want my photographers who want to be a good photographer to be a better photographer, but more importantly, I want people to understand how to embed you know, their vision, their heart, their soul into the pixels of their images or into their art. Like I had a, I had a gal who came on one of my retreats in France and, you know, it was all photography, but I approach it a very different way creatively and feeding, feeding the whole, you know, thing a different ways than a normal photo workshop. Well, she came home and discovered, she goes, I came here thinking I was a landscape photographer and she goes, I came home and I realized I'm a potter. And wow. She showed me some of the pottery that she made. Oh, that's, my that's, mind. 
Yeah, oh, it was incredible God. because she opened up her mind in one of those prismatic, different kind of ways as mm -hmm. a result of our experiences. And she started to photograph a little more that way as well by the end. And then she came home and went, I'm actually finding it in clay. So um, I love the color palettes you choose, Deb. Oh, it's thank the you. one way I can almost always <laughs> recognize your work. See, thank you. <laughs> your signature then starts to come through. And we are each individual expressions of this, you know, divine expression, just like the earth is. And, uh, and I think we owe it to the world to, to be the ones who do that. Like artists still have a voice. Voices have been squelched in so many ways over the years, um, but artists can still speak if they know how. And that I think is what, um, what we're really talking about here in so many ways. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. So it's wonderful things to think about for, right. for next year. Yeah. And actually, I have to say I have history in uh, um, I did pottery for quite a while. I did. I did really? Yeah, I did stone, uh, Kelly kiln, you know, the, the stone fired. And um, actually, wow. it was so hands on, it was so organic. And I think that led me to the photography early. I was doing like Polaroid emulsion transfers. I really liked that hands on. But then when I learned, you know, to move that it really into the, to working with the, the camera and Photoshop and different things, there's this different element. So it's interesting how that all ties together. There's yeah. that connectivity of, um, but absolutely, I have to respect that. That's really a challenge and beautiful work to, to work with your hands that way in your soul. Yeah, it's a, it's a, my husband's a musician, so he brings it all through, um, him his whole self he's a, he's a bass player upright you know jazz bass but he oh. can play, he can play anything plays electric and upright so it really comes through him and through his hands and his whole body oh, and everything yes. like that and i have never i mean i i danced figure skated i moved right so i was a figure skater a dancer an actor and a voiceover and um you know performed professionally and all this kind of thing and it would come through that way but i hate working with my hands absolutely oh, oh, oh that's, like, a, that's interesting you, uh, uh, uh. So, i'm like digging in so oh yeah i'm like oh no 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 and you know uh. so painting like people go why don't you paint why don't you I'm like mm, gotta touch that stuff i don't know it's just a thing so digital works really well for me and now it's really funny because my sister was an artist and she could do all that stuff and of mm -hmm. course you know you'd look at my drawings and then you'd look at hers <laughs> Or like a world a world apart but um you know that's why like digital works for me and so i work in procreate um that's how i do a lot of my like initial whether it's changing the photo or doing something with my photo and creating something more arty i do it in photo uh, procreate or sometimes i create from scratch and then i create something that i'm and like now i find myself thinking well maybe i'll learn to because that's not so messy i could probably because <laughs> i'm actually learning to draw that way by using my wow. phone wow. and learning light and shadow from my photos as i convert them into these other things in in procreate it's like a really weird way so there's a million ways that you can work with your brain and your in, you know the things you like to do and don't like to do you don't have to force yourself into any particular mold don't be moldy <laughs> No, 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 no molds. No, no rules. <laughs> moldy, moldy bad. Um, clean and free and clear is good. All right. I know we're running over our um, allotted hour. I'm loving it. I want it. So let's just do more. Do you guys, okay, so those of you that are here, do you, do you want more of this kind of thing? I don't know. Maybe Dev and I have to talk about what we want. This is just so energizing and so wonderful and I love it. And this is part of like, it's nice to give back to the community this way. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, when you called yesterday, I, I kept thinking we sounded like junior high girls laughing on the phone. <laughs> yeah. It was so funny, you know. And, but I think that's great. If we can share that energy, then that's it, right? <laughs> and, and I think that's like pure creativity. That I mean, not that you have to act like a five-year-old, although sometimes I do. But, <laughs> um, but that's another story. Um, but yeah, that's just that kind of woohoo, and the ideas are popping, and you're all excited. Yes, I mean, yes. Absolutely. People don't take the risk of, of being <laughs> joyful and happy and excited because they're like, no, we're not supposed to because we're being told everything's really horrible. And I'm like, um, you're still a sovereign spirit and you still, you know, came from a source that isn't any of that. It's this. And this is what we get to do is be ambassadors for that. So absolutely. Oh. <laughs> rah, rah. Get in there. <laughs> um, 
so somebody's saying I'd love to hear more, more from both of you. God knows. I can thank you. Stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Nice. Yeah, yeah so Deb, maybe, maybe you and I talk. I don't know about what. Just maybe we just talk about hair color. I love your hair. I just love your <laughs> oh, hair color. You. I started off my change, you know, thinking no, that, and it beautiful. turned out like this. I don't know. How no, it's gorgeous. Yeah, yeah, do what you love. So, yeah, I like this. So it's great to talk about creativity and not necessarily gear. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, because there is a creative source that you can tap into. The other part is just an assistant, you know, like a prism or a double exposure. Those are the helpers. But there is a mindset of being open to yeah, the, to tap into that. And I think that the gear doesn't count. It's not that. Because, you know, the right gear makes your vision come to life. And inspiration can come from gear, too. But the, mm -hmm. gear, the gear is not the, the, you know, the overlord of the whole creative process. And that's where I think some photographers get it backwards. Um, make that make all that tech technology work in service of you. Yes, absolutely. So we're all about <laughs> breaking free. <laughs> anyway, yes, lots of fun. All right, you lovely woman. I am going to let you go and have your day. I'm going to let all you people Thank have your you. day and your night and oh. your everything. And I hope you're all just kind of a little more energized. Yeah, yeah. Jump on it. Get some ideas going and and. and, and Thanks for sharing your time with us. And Karen, thank you so much for inviting me. I always appreciate it. It's always so much fun. So I know. <laughs> I know. I'm game. I'm just game. I'm just like, I don't know. Maybe that's a thing for next year. I want to connect with my like-minded friends. And I don't know whether it's talking or creating or whatever. It's uh, It just feels really good. Someone's making a really cool, take your time, especially since I was late getting here. It's fun <laughs> hearing thoughts behind the images and you're both producing unique and interesting work. Yeah. Thanks. So, so this will be assuming that I get to, uh, I'm, I'm always holding my breath after these lives because Instagram can be quirky. So I have to save it and do my comments right away. And then, you know, Oh, I'm sure. Gonna, I'm not even yeah. going to say that it ever has disappeared. Um, <laughs> So I just have to get it up, get it all there safely. And then you can go back and watch it. So that's uh, exactly what I'm going to oh, do now. Fantastic. Yeah. Yep. And, and then we can add in the links or the, yes. uh, so we, I'll send that right away. Oh, that's so we have access. Sure. Yeah. Do that. And then, I mean, I can always add it later. I'll put in whatever I've got now. And then sure. people can find you where? Deb Sandage at Deb Sandage on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook, um, Pretty much on link tree no they're all, all pretty much if you put deb sandage you'll find me <laughs> i'm here <laughs> and your website is debsandage.com right yeah yeah it's both deb sandage and deborah sandage so it's i cover all the bases all the debs i'm gemini by the way so <laughs> <laughs> no wonder that explains everything <laughs> so that's it that's awesome okay you well i'll talk to you really soon you guys thank you so much i love you all thank you and, um, let's just keep the flame burning bright <laughs> All right. Take good care. Thank okay. you. Bye, guys. Bye.